Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be going over how to write a blog post in WordPress. So let's dive in. So to get started, I just wanted to cover content a little bit here. I recommend having some kind of content calendar or at least a content list with various ideas and topics that you might want to cover. So normally when I'm brainstorming, I do something like create a Google Sheet or I go and I create a Excel file, either one. I tend to use the Google Sheets because you can use it in the cloud and use it anywhere very easily from different devices. And I like to just use a bunch of different tools to come up with ideas to add to this list. So I'm just going to go over some of these tools to help you with the brainstorming process before we actually go into structuring the post itself. All right, so the first one I'm going to cover here is called Keywords Everywhere. And this is something that you can install on Chrome or Firefox in these browsers. And basically, it will show you keyword data or at least estimates of keyword data for how much the search volume is. Another one here you could use is called Answer the Public. And basically, you're going to use discovery questions here. So you'll type in something. It could just be a word like this example here says chocolate. And you can just type that in, and then it will give you examples. So let's just do that. Let's just put in chocolate, and I'll hit Enter. And then it will calculate different questions, and it will populate questions back here that we can use and answer them in blog posts if they have some search volume. So I'd like to take these and check if there's any people actually searching for them. And it says there should be people searching for it. But if you look right here, it says like what chocolate bars are vegan and how chocolate is made. So you can answer questions about that if you're writing posts about chocolate. And this is a good site, answerthepublic.com, if you want to look for questions that you can answer within blog posts. Another option here is Google Auto Suggest. So let's just go and just use chocolate again right here in this example. And you can see when you start to write it that it gives you different options here. So chocolate chip cookie, chocolate chip cookie recipe, chocolate cake recipe, chocolate chip banana bread. And you get the idea. It starts to populate with different words and phrases that can make a good blog post topic or title that you could go after. So let's just go and take this a step further. And then you write chocolate chip and then it gives you all different options that you could write about for that so google auto suggests is an awesome thing that you can actually use and dive into what people are actually searching for a little bit more without actually having to use any additional tools so let's just go and just click on one right here if i click chocolate chip banana bread and this will come up and you can see that with keywords everywhere right here that I have installed, it's going to give us related keywords. So that is showing this tool right here, keywords everywhere in action within the browser here. It also will give you a volume for the monthly search volume, at least an estimate. So it estimates that 110,000 people a month are searching for chocolate chip banana bread. That's just crazy to me to even think about that that many people are searching for it, but that's the estimate that they give you. And you actually can use keywords everywhere within YouTube and use YouTube as an auto suggest option, just like Google has here when we type in different words to populate here by default. So a paid tool that I actually recommend and I have a free trial to down below is called SEMrush here. And if you want, you can use that link in the description. It's wpwithtom.com slash SEMrush. And with this tool, it's not cheap to use, but it's actually very, very effective. It's going to give you much more accurate information than anything else in terms of search volume, in my opinion. And it's going to help you come up with some great ideas with their keyword magic tool. I also have a video on that on my channel if you're interested in checking that out. So these are just some of the tools here that I use. I'm going to go and actually X out of each of these tools. And then we're going to go back over here for now. So in terms of actually writing the blog post, what I tend to do is outline the post before writing. And how I do this is I start with these main bullet points and headings for the post. And then I add subheadings like little thoughts that I want to make sure that I include within the post itself beneath each of the main headings. So when writing a blog post like this, I recommend that you use either Word and then you write it in. So this is an example of an old blog post that I had here. And I just suggest that you break the paragraphs up to be small. So right here in this case, you can see that it's a shorter paragraph. Normally when people think of like schoolwork, they think this is one paragraph or maybe even this whole area right here would be one paragraph. 
I'm talking just a few sentences to get the point across, be concise, and break it up with the spacing between each because that spacing makes it a lot more reader friendly and it will keep people on the site longer. It's just more visually appealing and it helps your website retention time, which is an important metric in the eyes of search engines such as Google. And another thing that's worth noting, at least in general search engines like Google, tend to prefer content that is longer form. So there have been numerous studies about this done that have tested literally millions of articles. And I probably wouldn't even write a blog post if it was going to be under 800 words. I would generally try to stick to 1,000 words or more. And a good thing to do is you can actually go and check out your competition. So if we were in Google, and we just went and looked at how to write a good blog post. So if we went and searched for that, you can go and let's go and click this first one right here that shows up in the default search results. And if you wanted to see how long this post was, I guarantee you it's over a thousand words long. You can see it's a very long blog post. I'm actually not even halfway down the page yet. So longer form content performs better. And if you notice, this person's actually done a pretty good job of breaking up things into smaller paragraphs. That's something I'd also recommend. So that is a longer blog post. And what you can do is you actually can copy all this and paste it into somewhere like wordcounter.net. And that is a great way to see how long the content actually is here. So I'm going to X out of that article here, but you can use wordcounter.net. It's a free tool to use to check the length of competitors for their articles and see where your own articles are at as well. If you're using something like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, you can check the word count as you go as well. But this is a great tool to quickly check your competitors. So at this point, if you've brainstormed some good topics and outlined the draft headings and subheadings and written your post within Google or a Microsoft document and made sure to check over it and break your sentences up, what I do is I take that blog post and I move it into something called Hemingway. And it's the Hemingway app, HemingwayApp.com. And here, this tool actually has a paid version. So I'm going to show you right here. If you go to desktop app, I'm going to click leave here. You can get it for $19.99. I actually have this myself. And if I go down to the bottom of the screen here, here it is. And I pasted this article in here already. So within the Hemingway editor, what it does is it gives you tips on how to improve your writing. So you can see it's highlighted right here. So right here it says 18 adverbs are used, aim for nine or fewer. So you can see right here I have personally, just, honestly, just, clearly, just, just, directly, smoothly, quickly. I know I write quickly a lot in here, quickly again. So you can go and change these or edit these very easily. It also tells you your word count in here as well if you want to see that. But what you can do is you can restructure the sentences and it will give you tips to make it easier to read. So you should shoot for somewhere around a grade seven reading level, in my opinion, for a good article. You can make it a little easier to read if you want. And it's just going to be more user friendly overall. And it's going to help you make your writing easy for the masses to read and understand. So right here it says just two of the 81 sentences are very hard to read and eight and 12 of the 81 sentences are hard to read. So that's a good rule of thumb to look at only 14 of the 81 sentences are considered hard or very hard to read. So it's a pretty easy to read article for most people out there that are going to be reading it. And that is a way that you can stay on track. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that when I'm actually going through creating my post in a Google Doc or on a Microsoft Word, what I tend to do is I bold the text for where I'm going to have links. So if I wanted to link to my YouTube channel, I would bold that. And I also bold the headings as I go through there. So when you paste it in to WordPress to actually post it, it's easier to see where you need to put the links each time because your eyes can go right to it and easily find where the links need to go. So with this all summed up here, let's go over to WordPress now and finally dive into seeing what that will look like. So I'm gonna X out of this and I'll go over to our site. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is go down to where it says settings and then I'll go to permalinks. And what you're going to want is to make sure your post structure is on post name. So the reason why you're gonna to wanna to do this is if you think about it, it says by default it was set to plain and your post might say wpfundamentals.com 
and then it says question mark p equals and then it might say 574 some random number no one really knows what that post is going to be about but when you have it in this post name let's say you're writing an article about chocolate chip cookies it might just say wpfundamentals.com slash chocolate hyphen chip hyphen cookies and it's easy if somebody is looking at that within google and if i went over here to google again and i put in chocolate chip cookies right here if i went down you can see this one says best chocolate chip cookies amazing chocolate chip cookies chewy chocolate chip cookies so you can see it's in the url of the actual post if i were to click on this you're going to see that this person is probably using this post format that I'm using. So it says best chocolate chip cookies as the post format. And it's going to be the same way as post name here. So what you'll want to do is go down here and save that format. And then we can go over to the actual post itself. So if we go over to where it says post, I've actually already pasted it in, but let's just go and click edit on this one. And what you'll need to do is paste it in here. So this is a little tutorial if you're not familiar with the Gutenberg editor. I'm going to just X out of it and show you. So the first thing you need to do when you're creating a post is name a title for it. So right now it says 244 because that was set to the previous blog post format. So if I just put in Green Geeks Review, which is what this was actually about, and then I go and I just click Save Draft right here. And we were to go over to permalink. Now it says the URL slug is Green Geeks Review. So it says wpfundamentals.com slash Green Geeks Review instead of 234 or whatever it just said before. So that is the first thing you want to make go into effect. If you click on it, you can also see it right here. So from here, what I do is right now all these titles are bolded. So what I would actually do with them is go right over here and change it to a different heading. So the first heading we usually want to be an H1 or at least an H2 in this case. So that is what we would want to put this in effect. I'm going to go and put H1 right over here. And then over here, you can do it with other ones and change the headings again and just make it a heading. And then you can do H2 like this one says right here. I'd actually need to break this up and undo that. But you can see what I mean. You can change the headings as you go. So right here, plans. You can make an H2, H3. As you go down, you should be only using H2s and H3s. You only want to have one H1 on the whole page or the whole post that you're creating. After that, you're going to want to use H2s and H3s in these other headings down here as you go through this. So in this post, we can go and add a link. So let's just say I wanted to link to SiteGround here. I can go and I can just go highlight it. And then I'll click on this little icon with a link. And here you can have the option to open it in a new tab or not. And then here's where you would put your URL. So if I just went over to SiteGround.com and then I can just go and copy this URL and I can just go and paste it in here. And now to make it go into effect, we can just simply click this. And now you can see there's a link there. You can see the color difference here. So that is how you would set up a link. I would recommend that you have it open in a new tab. The reason I say that is because it keeps people on your post in the actual page that the post is on for longer. And that, again, helps the retention time and keep people on the post for longer, which is important to Google. So let's say you wanted to add an image or something like that in here. Let's go and just click this add block and then we can search for image right here. And you can go to your media library or you can go and upload a file. And then if you wanted to add one, I'll just add this. And what you want to do here is make sure the title and the alternative text here make sense for the post. So if it's Green Geeks Review, you might want it to say Green Geeks Review. Or if it's talking about Green Geek Support, you might want to put Green Geek Support in the title and the alternative text. And then just hit Select to make it go into effect. So that is how you would add an image to this. And you can also go and resize the image very easily. You can just do it like that. Click, hold, and drag, and move it. So over here on the right side, if we click Document, we can go and see that there's different categories. So you can add categories, and this helps. So let's just say you had a category, and it was called Reviews, or maybe Hosting Reviews, or something like that. You just type it in, hit Enter. I'm going to click off of un Uncategorized. 
and here we have a new category so that helps you in terms of SEO as well and if we go down to tags we can also add different tags related to the post so a tag might be green geeks in this case and then it says separate by commas so we can also add site ground here as another option and then once you're happy with that you can just move on to the next section here i'm going to go over a featured image so if you want a featured image this is going to be the image that displays for this post this is where you would add it so if you click on that let's just say we wanted to add this one as the featured image again you want to change the title and alternative text and here i'll click set featured image so that is the image people are going to see when they come to our blog before they actually click on the article down here you can change the excerpt and choose how long it's going to be and then over here discussion you can allow comments if you want or you can check that off and not allow comments on your site and then the last thing i wanted to go over before we wrap this up is you can actually go and save the draft you can preview it and see what it will look like on the site so if we go and preview this is what it would look like by default and it's just a basic post here but you can see what it would look like in general in this preview i'm going to x out of that another thing you can do is you can actually publish it right away i'm going to go up here to the top or you can go and click on where it says publish immediately and you click on that and you can actually schedule it for a different time so this calendar is actually pretty nice because you can adjust the times and you can see when you have other posts scheduled already as well so i like to actually schedule posts in advance on the blogs that i do have and then after you do that so let's just say we schedule it then it will change publish to schedule now if you didn't want to schedule it like this and you wanted it to go live right away you would just click publish instead of actually going and changing the schedule date here so that is how you would set that up and i would also recommend that you have a social media sharing plugin on your site and i have a video that i'm going to have come up right after this one that shows you how to set one of them up there's actually free and premium options that I've covered on my channel, but I'll show you the free one at the end of this video. I really hope that this video was helpful in showing you how to write a blog post in WordPress and kind of my strategy for going about it and the editing part as well as how to actually make things look a little nicer here and set things up more properly within the dashboard here in the post section. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or a like and subscribe for more WordPress related tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.